Hi there, Victor Pross speaking to you, anarchist artist. Well, today uh, I want to talk about um, Adam versus the man on the uh, Christopher Green show. Christopher Green of Green Wave Radio and uh, Adam versus the man, um, of course, uh, it deals uh, or uh, presents uh, Adam Koresh. I was hesitant to say that because I fear that uh, I'm mispronouncing his name. So, um, here on in, we'll refer uh, to uh, Adam versus the man as uh, Adam. So, um, it was a very interesting uh, show. Um, I have a great deal of respect for uh, both of these gentlemen. And uh, it's inter interesting to note that uh, Adam, whose channel that I do recommend that you watch, as much as uh, Christopher Green's, is, uh, is a philosophical uh, anarchist. And uh, his uh, interesting story is, uh, was that he was a, a, a soldier, a military dude, who uh, was deployed to uh, Afghanistan, as I understand. And uh, long story short, uh, through some uh, being exposed to, to certain experiences and uh, certain ideas, and the wheels got a turn in, uh, slowly but uh, surely, and not anything overnight, he uh, uh, transformed from a military dude, uh, like you see in some of those horror flicks, like uh, John Carpenter's The Thing, you know, he transformed, you know, uh, from military dude to uh, uh, philosophical anarchist. <laughs> so... Uh, a lot of people tend to think that it's like some kind of like uh, religious conversion, you know, like, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're one thing, you know, and then all of a sudden, uh, you know, you see the light and then, uh, oh, I, the error of my ways, <laughs> you know, it's like it's some kind of like religion. Um, it's one of the annoying things about, uh, one of the uh, annoying misconceptions about anarchism, that it's like some kind of doctrinaire cult, you know, secular cult, you know. Uh, when all you're talking about is embracing a certain, uh, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ethics of non-aggression. Um, you know, I kind of, uh, joked with my brother about this, you know, where, uh, you know, he's kind of my brother and, uh, I guess in all kind of, uh, little dabs of acid, but play playfulness, you know, will, uh, make fun of my anarchism. And, uh, I kind of like, I've spun it around on him and said, uh, hey, did you punch your girlfriend in the face today? And he's like looking at me like, uh, uh no. I was <laughs> like, uh, oh, are you following that non-aggression thing with your girlfriend again? You know, that cute little cult of yours, you know? So, uh, basically the, but that's, uh, you know, that's where my anarchism uh, springs from. I do not, I do not accept any kind of other, uh, definition of anarchism, least of all the anarcho-communist, uh, definition. Uh, other than that, which is actually an, uh, a, a fully consistent logical application of the non-aggression principle, which in non-aggression means uh, physical force and the uh, threat of physical force. So uh, it was a very interesting uh, appearance that uh, Adam uh, had. And, uh, and I noticed that uh, there was a great deal of uh, respect uh, being allotted to uh, Adam, and he richly deserves it. And... Uh, uh, I uh, was on the show myself. I wasn't especially invited like Adam was. I was just a guy who called in and uh, basically uh, had a brief little conversation with, um, with uh, Christopher. And I was uh, talking about uh, uh, anarchism. Uh, I was trying to widen uh, Christopher's scope uh, because he was uh, somebody who was like just pouncing all over the word and using it uh, interchangeably uh, with uh, chaos and mayhem and destruction as if uh, anarchism uh, was uh, simply a, a synonym for those uh, uh, from, uh, of uh, destruction and uh, mayhem and, uh, and uh, chaos, which it's not. So uh, I noticed that whenever um, Adam tried to uh, bring up the subject, broach it, so to speak, tried to uh, widen the scope of the conversation himself to speak of volunteerism and anarchism, and it was kind of a sidestep by uh, Christopher, who uh, just preferred, it seemed, uh, to keep the conversation on uh, the specific events uh, that are happening on the world stage today. The specific and narrow concretes of, uh, of the nitty-gritty uh, uh, dirt, or hands in the, uh, in the dirt of, uh, of uh, modern politics. And, um, and that's all well and good. Now, just uh, basically as a prelude before I continue, just let me say this, though, that um, I do have a great deal of respect uh, for 
uh, Christopher. I mean, I've uh, made little snide uh, <laughs> comments here and there, uh, but uh, that is certainly not to be misconstrued as any kind of a derisive uh, dismissal of the man. Uh, not at all. Not whatever. Not whatsoever is that the case. Um, I just kind of like share that, um, you know, that uh, sardonic uh, edge and uh, rebellious rebelliousness that uh, Christopher is uh, known for himself. It's a beautiful summer day there, and I fly just uh, popped on my forehead there. It's a good thing I didn't have my my uh, uh, mouth open uh, pronouncing a certain vowel uh, to get a gullet full of uh, bug. <laughs> That's a, a very fortunate thing. So, uh, yeah, and I, I noticed that uh, where uh, Christopher uh, kind of like sidestepped me and, and his uh, companions, Fabian and Falcon, uh, just kind of like uh, were pretty... Uh, pretty dismissive and uh, condescending and uh, that's very unfortunate uh, uh, it would have been uh, quite a delight to uh, to see Falcon on that show on that specific show to talk to Adam and uh, to see if uh, if uh, Adam would have received the same uh, type of uh, treatment that uh, Falcon uh, dished out to me that would have been very interesting and um, that would have and definitely have been a, uh, a show worth to tune in to but uh, I have uh, sent out invitations uh, to Christopher to, uh, to have a debate with Falcon. I think that would be a very exciting show. I got no reply. And uh, it just seems like Chris wants to keep the show on to uh, very narrow specifics. And, um, but I do, uh, I do applaud the man for, bring, for the brazen balls that he uh, represents for uncovering uh, the uh, current political corruption. That's, that, that's all well. That is a great deal of value uh, concerning that. But uh, let's just speak of the downside of that. The downside, if that, if your entire show is just focused on that, and um, it's kind of akin to um, staring at a bark of wood, staring at a bark of wood. I mean, there you are. You're examining the bark bark of wood. It's brown. It's uh, it's uh, tactile to the touch. It's uh, got to, it's uh, got certain patterns and whatnot. And uh, you just focus on the bark of wood. There's the bark of wood. But you're depriving yourself of uh, a wider framework, a wider framework that if you step back, lo and behold, what do you see? You have the concept of, uh, of a tree uh, beyond the concrete specific of that, uh, the patch of bark of wood that you've been looking at. You've widened the scope. Uh, we are philosophical uh, creatures. We do have the, not only the gift of opposable thumbs to ward off uh, uh, summer flies and bugs, but we also have... Uh, uh, the capacity to philosophize. We have uh, uh, our mind is uh, capable of uh, very broad abstractions, and th those abstractions are the very means of our uh, survival. So, and uh, now, if you step back and to, to look at the uh, the tree, to hold the concept of tree in your head, uh, you can even take that uh, abstraction even further and to see and to uh, look at the uh, cluster of trees altogether and come up with the abstraction of forest. And it's just an amazing thing. It's just an amazing thing when you broaden your scope and uh, your world view of things when you uh, bring uh, philosophy to the fore. Uh, philosophy deals with the broadest abstractions and they're vital uh, to not only to communication uh, but to the very means of our survival. I'll give you an example uh, as applicable and germane to uh, present conversation. That um, if you... Here's the thing. It's all well and good, as I say, if you're a Christopher Green type of person who, uh, who points your fingers and do it very well to, to uh, point out that corruption is taking place, that it's taking place. And here's instances of it here, there, and over there. Look at the corruption, everybody. I'm Christopher Green. Look at the corruption that's taking place. So uh, I'm pointing out to you that it's taking place. Uh, but uh, that's all well and good, Christopher, but you're not pointing out the fact of why it's taking place. Why it's taking place. Step back, look at the forest, and uh, let's move above and beyond just looking at the uh, specific uh, uh, bark of wood. Uh, which uh, I'm, not, I'm not downplaying looking at the bark of wood. That's, that's really good. Look at the pretty bark of wood. Look at all the pretty... Uh, patterns and it's tactile to the touch. That's wonderful. Wonderful thumbs up for looking at the bark of wood and uncovering all the current corruption that's taking place. 
How about now we step back and uh, take a closer examination as to why it's taking place. Why it's taking place. Because if you do not look at the why and only that it's taking place, this is what I call humanity on a hamster wheel where you will have history repeating itself if you do not understand the why. Uh, understanding the why of uh, why states grow and why uh, governments uh, are corrupt and why every government at some point in time, if it becomes powerful enough, becomes tyrannical and uh, collapses the entire, uh, first causes uh, economic paralysis and then eventually collapse. And that is, is what it precisely is what ha is happening uh, to the uh, to the American uh, government. A lot of people figure that the American government was uh, absolutely beyond reproach, that it was a beacon of freedom, a leader in the world, that it was manifest destiny, that it's God-ordained, and uh, it tr truly is uh, representative of liberty uh, in action. But uh, the fact of the matter is, it's just, uh, <laughs> it's just another state. It's just another government. And following the trajectory of uh, course that any other uh, government, once it becomes large enough, following the same course that any other uh, state has uh, has uh, the road that it's traveled down, like uh, that history is uh, shown time and time again, taking the Roman Empire as one example. So, that's uh, that's the lesson that uh, humanity is, uh, is still uh, to learn. Uh, it's very easy to point your fingers. Everybody, uh, anybody in history, uh, whatever the government that we're talking about, uh, has, point, has, has had its critics pointing out the corruptions here and there and everywhere. Uh, and it's all well and good, and maybe that government is overturned, and then a, a new government steps in place, and it's like, well, it's a good thing that we got rid of that old government, and we got a new government in place, and thanks to the, the, those outspoken rebel-rousing individuals who pointed out the corruption. Uh, but now we've uh, removed one corruption for another, and uh, we've got to ask the question, uh, why is this taking place? Why is it taking place? And, uh, and, and, you know, truly, really, I mean, uh, anarchism, the spirit of anarchism, really, yeah, it's just a matter of, um, of, of asking those type of questions. You know, like, uh, taking it from this, uh, take it from this, uh, pin from this standard, that uh, anarchism really is a school of thought. When I say the spirit of, a uh, of anarchism, and that's so much of all the nitty-gritty, uh, rigorous academia uh, behind it, and the technicalities of uh, certain um, uh, philosophies, uh, you know, economy and whatnot. It can get very technical. It can get very brainy, uh, you know, and that intimidates a lot of people who figure they don't have the gray matter to absorb it all. But really, let's just look at the spirit of anarchism. What does that mean? The spirit of anarchism really is that, um, you know, the government is in, in, the, in the state, and I just mean the phenomena of government. I'm not speaking of any kind of government right now. Just the fact of government, the state. That's all I'm talking about. It is not some holy fucking sacrament, okay? It's not God-ordained. It's not uh, uh, beyond reproach to critically examine that uh, concept, okay? Everybody th figures themselves so brave, so warrior-like if they take on the, the, mighty, the mighty Leviathan in its current incarnation. Uh, but they, they become little chicken shits when it, when it comes to taking a, a critical probing eye at the fact, the phenomena, the abstraction, the cult, the religion, uh, of statism as such, as such, okay? Uh, it's just like, it's just always a matter of, let's bring the government, uh, let's restore the government, you know, to <laughs> uh, how it appears in some floaty ab floating abstraction without examining what the government is, what the state is. So, um, basically, it's that kind of framework that I would like to uh, speak with. Consider this a prelude video, and uh, I'd like to say more about... Uh, Anarchism, the uh, Adam's appearance on the show, uh, the Constitution, Ron Paul voting, anarchism, uh, the whole kit and caboodle in the next uh, video. It might be one or two videos, I don't know, but I just wanted to uh, uh, whet your appetites, hopefully, and uh, cut it short right here and now. Thank you so much for listening. Victor Pross signing out for now. Uh, pop goes the culture.